lot of my real life friends always ask me like glass how do you continue to be a top performing sales rep you're constantly improving your physique you run a youtube channel where you do everything editing filming all of it and you still kind of make time to be social and i'm gonna be real with you. that's kind of hard i ain't even gonna cut i believe the secret sauce to people making big progress towards their goal all lies in their daily routine and if people just take the time to understand the pillars of a productive daily routine then it has the power to completely transform their lives and if they don't they will probably come to the end of 2023 just like they did last year look at their goals and be like god damn I didn't come close to hitting any of these. So that's why in this video, I'm gonna share with you guys my daily routine on how I maximize productivity, guys. But you need to understand, this is not a one size fits all solution. Just because this works for me doesn't mean it will work for you, but I hope that you take a few things and use it in your process and you get better at executing on a day-to-day -day basis. So with all that out the way, y'all know I ain't Xbox. This ain't Skyrim. We ain't playing no games. We're gonna get right into it. Let's go! Now, because of football, guys, I've always kind of been a morning person, but I understand being a morning person is not for everybody and creating a very good morning routine is very hard to do. But creating a morning routine is vital, guys, because a morning routine is at the start of your day. And for the average person, if your day starts like shit, then the rest of your day will be shit. And we don't want that. So here's my morning routine that has me feeling like muff Goku by 8 a.m. So here's my routine that has me feeling like Goku by 8 a.m. See, guys, after football, I used to hit the snooze on my alarm like it was my job. But I realized that the root of the problem had to do with my environment. See, guys, I set my alarm for 67 degrees because that's how I, that's really the only way I can go to sleep. And that's great for when you're trying to go to sleep. But it's a whole lot different story when you wake up at 4 a.m. and you feel that 67 degree AC touch your body. The first thing you're going to do is be like me and want to go back to sleep for 30 more minutes. And then I do that. And next thing I know, three and a half hours have passed. But after assessing and analyzing, guys, I figured out I can't let that happen anymore. If I'm going to be, if I'm going to go where I need to go, I need to get my ass up. So here's how I have changed that. See, guys it was a simple fix after i did a little bit of reflection and analyzing all i did was change I, I keep the temperature at 67 degrees when i sleep but now i have it slowly rise to 76 degrees by 4 a.m why do i do that I don't know about y'all, but I can't sleep when I'm hot. That shit is uncomfortable, bro. That shit not fun. Ain't nobody getting no sleep in 76 degrees. Can't do it. So what happens, guys, instead of me, by the time 4 a.m. comes around, the AC is already at 76 degrees. So by this time, I've already probably been feeling a little comfortable. Then I hear my alarm at 4 a.m. And I'm like, I could go back to sleep, but it don't really feel good in here. Feel kind of hot. I don't want to go to sleep in this. So what it does is it forces my body to get up. So that fixed one half of my problem. So next I had a bad habit of reaching for my phone as soon as I got up, you know, just mindlessly scrolling on social media. And I'll be honest, I didn't completely fix this habit. I still reach for my phone. But now instead of going on social media and scrolling, I go straight to my custom created playlist on YouTube of motivational speakers. And guys, trust me when I say it is very hard to sleep for an extra 15 minutes when you got David Goggins yelling at you. Why don't you go ahead and just stop? Call your girl, have her pick you up. And that's when I feel like a little bitch. Little bitch. Next, I knock out my daily self-care routine, guys. I do the normal stuff. I brush my teeth, take a shower, sometimes hot, sometimes cold. Guys, I take all my medicines that I have to for life. You know, some, you know, nigga gotta take medicine. I'm getting old up here, okay? Then I hit my protein shake and I pop a caffeine pill. Yes, I am into biohacking. Don't judge me, bro. I'm just trying to be productive out here. From there, I focus on getting my body moving by taking my dog Yoshi on a walk, guys. And this is where the real game changer comes in. I use that walk as a chance to habit stack. Habit stacking is where you take an old habit and you add new habits to it making it easier for your new ones to stick so since i'm already walking yoshi for like two hours a day i figure why not add some stuff to that walk so here's what i do the first thing i do is facial exercises i learned it from first man and men's maxing guys and i do this to try to to try to boost my levels of looks call me shallow call me what you want but i want to be attractive to the opposite sex i'm sorry does that make me wrong? I want to be attractive to them. So I do some facial exercises. Second thing I do is review my goals. Guys, it's important that you stay focused on the task at hand. And this helps with that. Third thing I do is visualize my future and the steps it's going to take to get there, guys. Now, before you judge, I just want you to know most pro athletes do visualization. You know them games that y'all be watching? But guess what? Those guys have already played that game in their head probably 10 times before they ever step on that field. So don't tell me visualization don't work. Some of the top athletes do it. And to wrap it up, I blast my Vegeta motivational playlist on the way home as I'm walking back. Man, that guy, 
I just love his hard work and he gets me hype as hell. So at this point, I'm back in my crib and I'm hype as shit, right? Right. But you can't just be hype. You got to focus that energy. So then what I like to do is the power five, but really I have changed it to the power three. So I go to my desk. I look at my goals again and I ask myself what are one to three things I could do today that is going to make the biggest impact or biggest progress toward my goal. Because guys, you got to understand being busy does not mean you're being productive. Productive. And by me doing the power three, what that allows me to do is prioritize what I'm going to do for the day. But just identifying your power three isn't going to be enough. I recommend that you take the next step and actually physically carve out time on your calendar to do these actions. Trust me. By putting it on your calendar, you're mentally committing to the time and you're being very realistic about the 24 hours you have to do whatever it is you want to do. By doing this, guys, it's going to help you out in the long run. By the way, I recommend setting aside one to two hours per power task. And then from there, it's simple, guys. I go smash on some breakfast. And then lastly, at this point in my morning, I got about an hour and a half before work. And what you'll find out about me is, guys, I don't like to do a lot of things at once. I think the brain works better when you don't multitask. So what I'll do is I will, lead, I will use this hour and a half as a lead blocker, I will do all my admin tasks, all the little BS that gets in my way during the day. I'll handle that here in the morning. That way, when it comes to my daily routine and doing the stuff that matters, nothing gets in the way I can attack with full tenacity. All right, now on to the bulk of my day and how I manage it. And heads up, this is where most people drop the damn ball. You guys got to understand, it's not about creating more time. That's not even possible. There's only 24 hours in a day for all of us. But how you use that 24 hours is what makes the difference. And the biggest thing that can help you use that 24 hours correctly in terms of going towards your goals is learning to say no. Learning to tell people no. By doing this, you're going to be able to further zero in on what's important to you. And the best way to do that, in my opinion, is using this powerful combination of time blocking and the Pomodoro technique. I call it my golden hour. During this golden hour, I turn off all distractions. I put my phone literally outside the room. I turn off all the notifications. I put my emails to sleep and I silence my chat at work because this is my time. This is my golden hours. And from there, I work in 25 minute bursts. After I do 25 minutes, I rest for five minutes and then I do 25 more minutes. That completes my hour block of whatever I'm working on. Now, you may not think that's going to make a big impact, but let me tell you, my guy, you are wrong on that. Because like I said earlier, guys, the brain does better when it's not multitasking, when it's focused on one thing. The problem is a lot of people, let's say sales, for example, they try to do emails, they try to do calls, they try to do admin, they try to do all that stuff at once instead of segmenting it out and doing one thing at a time. And because I have switched to this mode of operating where I do one thing at a time for that hour block, trust me, I'm able to accomplish more in that hour than most people do at Yelp in their whole work day. OK, I'm able to do more in that hour than they do in eight hours because my work is focused and highly intentional. But don't think for a second that I just do all this all day without taking a break. Guys, look, I'm one of the most productive mother I know. And I can't even go eight hours straight while doing this. So I do take some breaks specifically after my hour burst. I will take a 30 minute break and I'll go chill. Maybe go eat some lunch. Maybe go watch some anime. Maybe go watch some YouTube videos, you know, relax a little bit. Yeah, it's taken away from the time that we actually work, but it's going to be making us more focused on our next blast. So the efficiency won't change there. So at work, what I'll do is I'll do my first hour on sales calls and then my next hour will be just straight emails. And by doing that, guys, I'm able to, to send a lot of them and send very good emails. The brain just works better when it's not multitasking. So then I repeat those hour blasts all day till about 1 p.m. That's when I'm done working at Yelp. Now, don't tell them. Well, actually, really, it shouldn't even matter because if I'm able to do more than most people and stop working by 1 p.m., then, then it really shouldn't matter to them. But from there, I take a lunch break and then it's all YouTube. And I use the same technique, time blocking the Pomodoro technique to work on my YouTube videos as well. And I do those things one at a time. Here's an extra tip though. Guys, why don't you go ahead and help yourself by setting up your environment, create a playlist to where you can actually focus. Make sure your desk is clean. Or uh, for me, I have a standing desk because that's when I do best. That's when I do my best work. That's when I focus when I'm standing. So I'll stand up, I put on my focus playlist and then we moving and grooving, baby. And then finally at 5.30, I take a break and I go do a group fitness class. Now I do Orange Theory, guys. I know you guys probably want to lift. You guys want to be meatheads and that's fine. Honestly, I, I would do that too. But here's the thing. I don't want to have to think. I want to use all my brain power for my two main goals, which is Yelp 
and in YouTube. So I want to go somewhere where somebody tells me what to do. I can work hard and go home. So I go, I do that and I work out. Then I go home, take my protein shake. Then it's back to YouTube till 830. Then it's time to walk the dog again. And guess what I do, guys? Yes, you got it correct. I have it stack. I use that time effectively. What I'll do is I'll look at some prompts as I'm walking. I'll use voice to text to jot down my notes for me reflecting. And then I'll take that time to either listen to a course or some audible books as well. After I get back home, I'll pop some melatonin. I'll pop some CBN, you know, just to get my mind in my body right for a good night's rest. From there, I whip up some good dinner. You know, I keep it pretty simple. A nigga don't really know how to cook like that, but I do some steak and eggs, brown rice, you know, typical shit like that. Broccoli, you know, uh, baked chicken, brown rice, you know, the typical stuff. Uh, I'm trying to get the 10% body fat, okay? But anyway, here's the real secret to my successful nighttime routine, evening routine, whatever you want to call it. The real secret is once I've done all that stuff, guys, I take some time to wind down. I just went hard from 4 a.m. till about 8.30 p.m. I just went hard. No use in trying to kill yourself. So I take some time. I take my dinner. I go sit on the couch. I go watch some anime. Right now I'm watching Hunter Hunter. That shit, that shit live as hell. I can't even cap. That shit really good. But I do believe in working hard, but I also believe in taking breaks. I'm a guy that I can't shove any more educational content on me right before I go to bed because my brain will never shut off. It'll just keep thinking about it. So this is how I wind myself down for sleep. So after I get done watching TV, I go into my room to create the perfect environment. I turn my fans on. I have another fan right next to my bed. Turn that one on. That way it's cold as hell in my room. I go close my blinds, close my shades, my blackout curtain. That way it's completely dark. And then I turn on some sleep hypnosis, some sleep affirmation. Now, I don't know if that stuff works, but I figure it can't help. Uh, and I think it works, by the way. And then it is time to set my alarms and I am out. I am asleep by 10, 1030 max and getting ready for the next day. And just like that, guys, it is a wrap. No burrito. That's really all I got to say. That was my daily routine for maximum productivity. That was the daily routine that allows me to outwork at least 90 percent of people in this world. I hope you guys took something from it. I hope you can find something useful to implement into your own routine, because at this point, you've gotten the information you need. Now, all you got to go do is guess what? Take some action. So I don't even know why you're still here right now. Get the fuck out of here.